Let's start with this incredible exhibition. Gary, I'm going to start with you. What are your, what are your thoughts on the exhibition? I'm, I'm still trying to come to terms with the fact that this is in Darwin, to be honest. <laughs> you know, the last time I was on that car park, I was about 16 years old and two lads went down there for a fight because they knew it wouldn't get broken up if they went under there. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and we, we'd, we'd had conversations about doing it in Darwin um, and it was like, you know, 50th anniversary, Hong Kong, Milan, London. And I was like, forget London. Bring it to Darwin, we've got the British Textile Biennial, which is a great vehicle to carry it. And uh, I just said, it, you know, it's, you could, there's a lot of brand events happening in big cities, so to do something like this here is, is really meaningful. And uh, CP Company didn't take a lot of convincing. And, but every time we were having the phone calls, there was a point me, but I wanted to keep pinching myself. Cause got, so when we're coming to Darwin, and these like, <laughs> Italian accents, and like, so yeah, I'm, I'm just thrilled to bits bringing this here. Is a, for me, it's like a real yeah. career high. Mm -hmm. Lorenzo, what were your thoughts when you walked in? <laughs> what was your, how did you feel when you saw the exhibition? Well, uh, it's been amazing. It, it's really amazing to see so many people in love with this brand that uh, somehow is, is part of my family, so I feel very close to it. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, I was not totally surprised uh, because I had a chance to come here two years ago. I think it was to here when we shot the, the Eyes on the City video with, with Gary. And that time was the first time in, in, in the North for me. And I was totally shocked because um, everybody was wearing CP. And, <laughs> and, and people, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's not common for us. In Italy, it's not like this. And people were stopping me and want to take picture with me. And, uh, and I didn't realize <laughs> why. Um, so the, the, the real surprise was two years ago. Yesterday was kind of confirmation, um, but that surprise actually was the reason, the main reason that, uh, for which we decided to make the exhibition here. Because it's really, I mean, I feel this brand is really bonded with this community, with these people, and, and I, I thought that was the place where we have to celebrate the, our 50th anniversary. And, uh, but one, one thing actually surprised me also yesterday, and it's more a uh, topic of design, I watch them because I'm not a designer. Uh, what surprised me is to find a lot of, um, let's say, high-end pieces of CP. Uh, the most sophisticated. You know, probably, we do a lot of research. Um, Paul and all the stuff come up with great, uh, great design, great ideas. But m most of the time, I mean, people buy the regular thing. But <laughs> yesterday, I found some amazing pieces from, from the last season, the most sophisticated one, no? Yeah, yeah. So that means that it's not only an affection and, and a love with the brand, it's really an understanding of, of what we do in terms of research and, and love for the products. There is a fierce loyalty, isn't there? People they love and care about um, a, a brand. It, it, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, yeah, always, always surprised me. And, and it's, it's particularly true here in, in the North. It's, it's really an emotional attachment of, yeah. of the, uh, to this brand. It's mm. not just, I, I like it, I buy it, and, and then tomorrow I like something else. And uh, what feelings did it evoke with you, Paul, when you, when you walked in there? Um, it's quite, <laughs> I find it um, um, in, incredibly interesting. I mean, the, the, uh, the, sort of the thing that sort of drove things home a little bit was uh, we went to see the library upstairs uh, a couple of days ago, and the library is exactly the same as um, the library I used to go to when I was a little boy near Middlesbrough. Uh, exactly the same, exactly the same library. And so this idea of sort of like this, uh, this company that comes from Bologna, which is uh, a very exotic, very beautiful, very exotic city in Italy. And the way it, this, it clashes uh, with this world of, uh, in Darwin is, I think is incredibly interesting. Very, it's, you know, something incredibly risky. I mean, I don't think many, <laughs> many brands are doing it. But I think it's been a brilliant idea. I really do. And I'd say, how was it for you? Because I'm assuming that, that your collaboration is in there, yeah? Yeah, man, yeah. How, how does that feel? No, it was, it was mad. I went with my daughter and uh, we were walking around and uh, she saw there's like a picture of me popped up from the book and there was like the, my jacket was nearby and she was like, Daddy! <laughs> and it was like a bit of a moment, you know. I was like 15 minutes down the road for me, like, you know, got in the car and I was just all of a sudden here. And um, it's like going full circle, you know, from, from just having this moment of inspiration that has stayed with me since, you know, since I was a kid. 
uh, that was really embedded in me because of CP Company, um, and particularly, you know, the Mila Milia. And to be in Darwin, as you say, like in a beautiful uh, sort of example of repurposing something industrial, for me, especially, you know, as a conceptual designer, as a conceptual thinker, I thought it was like the perfect metaphor for Massimo's approach mm. of repurposing industrial, authentic products into something futuristic. How the past becomes the future, uh, which I think is you know, incredibly inspiring, and I'm still trying to understand it. Um, and it was like a physical, geographical expression, I believe, of that, you know, of that essence that I think is behind CP Company. Because your father Massimo was from Ravarino, you know, a, a, a small place near Bologna, and um, is there that kind of um, that sense that um, he was kind of almost sh shut off from, from from the other fashion world because he didn't really have dealings with Milan and places like that, did he? Absolutely, no, no. Uh, you're right. No, no. My father is um, is from Bologna. The company was in Ravarino. Okay. It's actually just a logistic thing because it was the company there. But uh, you're right. I mean, um, he never he never moved to Milan. He never get uh, too close to, I mean, the fashion scene where everything was happening uh, in in this world. Uh, so he was uh, at all level a kind of an outsider. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember in his latest day, uh, he was a bit. Uh, yeah. uh, he had some regrets <coughs> about not moving to Milan. I said maybe I should have uh, when when I was asked. But at the end, I think um, it's what really uh, make him uh, have a different perspective was to be outside of this world. Mm. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a person that was not. It was trying not to get influenced by what was around. Mm. So. He stayed in Bologna, and he stayed most of the time in his, in, in his office by his own uh, and just designing. Uh, so yeah, I think that this, this different edge that CP and other brands he designed had from, from the mainstream fashion is, is partially uh, due to the fact that uh, he was outside of this circle. Did he revere any other designers, you know, his, his contemporaries, his, his peers? Yeah. Well, at that time, I'm, um, I was a kid, yeah. So I, I tell uh, I have two two different perspectives: one from being uh, close to my father, but just as a son, and, and the one being uh, someone who would try to understand and study what happened. Um, and from this second perspective, uh, I would say at that time uh, um, there there was like no no middle land. There was no this what we call the sports for now. So um, my father. Didn't study fashion. He came from. I mean, he had to go to work at thir uh, 13 years old. He didn't have the chance to study. Uh, he just made a, a graphic design uh, night course when when he was around 20, uh, and he approached uh, fashion almost by chance. Uh, so this angle probably uh, helped him to to have this new fresh perspective. At that time, from what I've studied, I mean, there was him and Armani who were trying to approach this industry from, from a completely new angle. Uh, but of course, there were two very different worlds. Armani was yeah. in Milan, it was Armani, I mean, the biggest name ever. And my father always been an outsider and remained an outsider in, in a way. It's quite incredible to think that the sportswear didn't really exist before. Y yeah, I imagine, I mean, seeing the, the average age of the audience, uh, most of you, 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 can, you can imagine, but uh, yeah, it was like that. I mean, there was nothing, nothing, nothing similar. And just to qu quickly on your father, um, I was reading that even though he was, he was conjuring up these incredible designs, um, in terms of what he wore on a day-to-day -day basis, it was quite a Basic kind Absolutely. of wardrobe, is this right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That passed it to me. It's, uh, it's a kind of, <laughs> yeah. No, it's a kind of, of, a, of a uniform mentality, you know? I mean, um, don't really want to put your mind into thinking how to pair things together. So he was, he had, I think he had like uh, 20 pair of uh, khaki dockers, uh, 20 pairs of uh, black uh, what, uh, blazers, and, and, and blue or, or black. Um, uh, let's say, uh, knitwear. 
Usually, usually also with big O or something. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> when, he, when he in love with something, it was difficult to, to walk away. Yeah. Paul, what are your first uh, recollections of meeting Massimo? I met him on one occasion. Oh, really? Yeah. On one occasion, we said, we said uh, ciao, come stay. Hello, how are you? That was it. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's true. Wasn't wow. an easy moment. <laughs> <laughs> and my father wasn't an easy person. Yeah. No, and it wasn't an easy moment, Lorenzo, is there? Gary, um, what's your first memory of, of, of CP Company? <laughs> well, we did that panel in London the other week and uh, I was talking about the first time I saw a Millie and that was on a guy called Des, who's uh, 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 he's from Darwin originally, but he, uh, he defected to anger around with kids from Blackburn. Did he really? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. But, um, but yeah, I remember seeing him in that and, and, and that having a real impression on me and that would have been about 1989. So I was aware of the brand at that point. But um, yeah, so I don't know exactly when it came in, but obviously seeing the Millie for the first time makes you kind of go, what yeah. the hell is yeah. that? And uh, to, to now see the way that <coughs> the goggles and the lens has become so kind of Integral. Nobody kind of nobody kind of stops and looks twice no. if you see someone with a goggle jacket on. Now it's just like it's it's integrated into everyday life. It's because it's it, it is really high conceptual Absolutely, design ideas, yeah, yeah. and to, to to sort of bring that into everyday life and make it democratic and make it accessible. That's a real that's a real thing. You know what mm. I mean? That's a real skill, and that's that's you know because it, it's all right doing things that are kind of high art and conceptual, but it's how can you translate that yeah. into everyday life yeah. so that you know, people engage with it and have experiences with it. And I see so you, you, uh, you were born in Argentina, and you come and you, and you moved to, to Burnley? Or, yeah, or via Madrid. Madrid. Yeah. Sorry, via all right. Madrid, yeah. uh, easy, yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> when did it kind of hit you? When do you kind of become aware of this, this subculture? When I was about 13, I started becoming aware of this uniform you know, and uh, it just, I mean, it, it's, it, it's left a feeling inside mm. me that hasn't left me yet. It deeply inspired me, and particularly, as Gary says, you know, the first time you see the Millie, for me, seeing somebody wearing this garment was, for me, like they had, something had happened that, managed to find the holy grail of, of embedding fantasy into reality. Mm. And it made everything possible for me. And I swear, everything that I've done ever since has been to recapture that feeling that Massimo's work sort of ignited in me. Yeah. You know? In terms of collaborating, how, how good are you at collaborating? Uh, I think it depends um, with who it's who it's with. I mean, we did in this sort of the 50 year celebration thing. Uh, we did a series of collabs. Um, there were two that were really great. Uh, the Alia da Special one was really good, and the one we did with the barber. They were just sort of like immediate, like bang, that was it. And um, the jacket, we sort of we started off. We sort of, for CP Company said no, it should be a field jacket. Uh, then Gary sort of said, no, we really want to do this, uh, the, the Adidas one. I can't remember what it's called. The uh, Hassan The Hassan has one, sorry. And we sort of said, no, yes. Uh, and then, you know, we, sort of, we, we put it together. We did the same thing with the shoes. Um, the guy wanted to do one and we wanted to do it. Uh, and then we sorted it out sort of just like that. And yeah. it, it, I mean, the, the really nice thing about it and the, what happened with, with, with Special and what happened with Barber, Barber, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, they, were, um, they were immediate. They really were like, Okay, and that, that, that was great, you know, that yeah, there, really was great. There were, there, were, there were concessions on both sides, oh, yeah, and yeah. we were able to make concessions because there was an existing trust. Yeah. So it's, it's a genuine kind of mix of the, mm -hmm. the two brands, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, the, and the camo itself is a, a 1970s Italian camo. Yeah. Yeah, Again, yeah. so it fits in with the 50-year story. What it, what it really comes down to for me is, is the context of how things are worn. Paul designs and makes good product, and then the, the, the customer decides what to do with that product and how to make that product their own. And, you know, the, the whole subculture that you've got in the north of England is all about that, really. Mm -hmm. It strikes me like you're almost a bit of an outlier within the fashion industry, and I would say the same with you, and also with you. And I, I think um, Massimo, Massimo was, in, in, in that respect, he was kind of, he was this incredible person within fashion, but not within fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
let's quickly talk a little bit about um, collaborations, if, if we may. Um, I'm going to try and get an exclusive out of you here. Um, so you've done a lot of collaborations recently with Sebago, you know, Pata, obviously with Special. Um, are there any more, any more in the pipeline? Yeah, yeah, there is a. There, <laughs> I cannot disclose. Hey. Uh, I cannot disclose at all, but but uh, there is another one coming uh, to close the, the celebration. Uh, I think will be very interesting because it's pretty uncommon, we can say. It's got an idea to follow the other ends of hmm? to follow. <laughs> yeah, it's going to struggle. I know, Nobody I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, um, I hope I will not disappoint. Uh, but yeah, and then we will close it that. No, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. But in general, I mean, we were very strict with collaboration at the beginning. And um, because when we started, uh, Okay, except th this year is a special year, so uh, it's, it's different. But at the beginning, we were very picky. Um, we, we were probably afraid of making mistake. No, to, to, to everybody was jumping into collaboration, sure. so uh, was we had the first approach to that was very difficult. But then, I mean, I'm a bit more relaxed now because I understand it's something that really enriches you because you invite someone else on having his own perspective on your work. Uh, at the same time, you, you can have a, um, a bite or, or a view on their own world. So I think it's, I mean, besides being more successful, less successful, it's something that open up your mind and, and help you to, to have new perspectives. So I, I'm definitely yeah. happy and where, with that. And where would you like to, to, see the, to see the brand go from here? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, um, I go with, uh, with Paul Credo. I mean, I think CP company always need to push the boundaries and do something that has never done before. So I, I can say where the society and, and the costume will be in 50 here, but if CP company will be there, uh, we'll be trying to do something that nobody has done yet. Fireproof jackets. <laughs> The thing, the thing is with CP company, exactly. it's integral to culture. It's like what we were talking about earlier, how nobody looks twice now when you see a goggle jacket, which, you know, 20 years ago was like, wow, that's a radical mm. thing to be wearing. You know, and, and, and culture is derived from two words, which is cultivate and nurture. And <coughs> what's, what's happening with CP company in Darwin right now is about cultivation of new audiences, but also nurturing its existing audience. By doing this thing in Darwin, it demonstrates that this brand understands. Yeah. And that's important. Mm. For me, it's like, you know, it, it's a brand that's integral to culture and, and, and it's cultivating and nurturing by doing something like what these guys have had the, mm. the courage to do in Darwin. Because yeah. it takes balls to do something mm. like that. that. Anyone that's been in that exhibition will see that that's not a cheap exhibition. No. You know what I mean? And, and this is a small northern mill town in an economically deprived area. I just think it's mind-blowing. Mm. And I, I'm, I, can't, I can't even verbalise how thrilled I am that this has happened. Yeah.